morning, everyone, um, and happy Monday. Um, today is Monday, August 22nd. My name is Lisa McCreary, and I am one of the senior trainers here at AHCP. And let me just say once again, happy Monday morning. Mondays are always those challenging mornings because we're just trying to get back into the, 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 the role of things of what we're trying to do. But I am so glad that you guys have decided to join me today here to talk about our Motivation Monday topics. I'm really excited about this one because this is a real passion of mine. And this is really how I grew my personal business um, with helping customers. And the sales topic is how to build trust with your clients. So building trust and maintaining strong relationship with clients is super important for sustaining business growth. And we all know that. Um, it is common for agents to focus their, their resources and all of their attention on gaining new clients and new business, especially in the very beginning. And that's how it should be. However, I want you guys to think about something else. You don't need to always rely just on that new business in order to grow your business. Continuing to work with your existing customers, your existing business partners, your existing existing powers of influences like those CPA agents or um, different lawyers that you might work with, all of those individuals can also help you continue to build your pipeline so that it will remain full for repeat business and for referrals. So don't just forget about this is building trust. It's also about establishing that trust with new clients, but it's also maintaining trust with our existing clients so that we can work smarter, not harder by getting that repeat business as well as getting those referrals. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly is trust in business. Now, I got to tell you guys, when it comes to trust in healthcare insurance, it is no different than trust in any other relationship that we have. When we look at doctor-patient relationships and the fact that we trust our doctors when we're going in those operating rooms and when they're prescribing medicine to us, we trust their judgment and we trust that they're going to give us the best decision. Husband and wives, they have to have trust in order to sustain their relationship lawyers, CPAs with their clients. You know, if a CPA, if you can't trust your CPA in doing the right thing for you when it comes to doing those taxes, it can be catastrophic. So it is very important for us to establish those relationships, not only with those type of individuals, but I just wanted to show you that your influence and the importance of building trust with um, what you do in the healthcare insurance industry is just as important as any relationship that we have out there. Trust is a firm belief in the reliability on one's character and, and ability. Really, trust is hope. It's really wanting and believing in something to be true. Trust is also the foundation that motivates us as buyers and draw positive energy to support and sustain a healthy relationship. Without trust, guys, there is no relationship that can last. People just cannot comfortably work with other people that they can't trust. And you guys can probably attest to that in personal relationships that you have. So that actually brings me to my very next point. My next point is buying is an emotional decision. And most of us probably don't think of it as this, but I wanna go a little bit deeper and explain exactly what it is. It really is an emotional decision. You should realize that when you are interacting with your clients, they are very passionate about their buying decisions. And you guys probably know that. For example, they 
fear that they might make the wrong decision. That terrifies them. When they make those right decisions and when they feel they have used their funds to get them in the very best plan possible that they can afford, happiness and relief is all in their system and they're ec ecstatic about what you have been able to do for them. But remember, they also draw on past experiences to help them make their decision. So some of those past experiences are positive and some of them are negative. So one of the things that is important for us as agents is to realize and to acknowledge that this is a realization that people are emotional buyers um, when they are making decisions. When it comes to loyalty, guys, trust is right there in the mix. Um, take me, for example. I'm going to give you an example. For the past 15 years, I have purchased my cars from one dealership, not just one dealership, one Pacific dealer, even my children cars. I, I always, just to, so that you know, I always purchase used cars because I just can't see myself paying for the depreciation. I'm just cheap like that. But my loyalty to this dealer and this um, dealership is so strong that even when I try to step outside of the box and go to another dealership and say, show me what you got, I normally take that information and take it back to my dealer to say, okay, so this is what I heard from out there. What can you do for me? So even with exploring other options, because my loyalty and my trust is so strong, and that is that was built by specific things that we're going to talk about a little bit later, um, because my loyalty is so strong to this dealer and this dealership, I won't shop anyplace else for a car. So what does it take to build this type of loyalty and trust with your clients. Now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of this. So if you want your clients to remember you, they must be engaged and excited by the interaction with you. So what do I mean by that? First impressions are lasting impressions, guys. What you say to your clients in the very beginning does matter. How you say it to your clients, that does matter. What I want you guys to do right now is just, just take a minute and ask yourself, how can you create an engaging and exciting interaction with your clients? What can you do with every single phone call that you have and every single encounter that you have to make your client feel engaged and excited about interacting with you? I'm going to give you a little bit about what I do and the things that I have done. So for me, it is very important that they know that I care about their individual needs and the needs of their, their um, family. Um, I don't take the cooker cutter approach and I, it's very important for them to know that I'm listening to their needs and I am acting upon what they have told me that they need. It's also very important for them to feel, and I use the word feel strongly, that I am here to help them with their, their particular situation. That's really important to me. There's this thing I used to keep on my computer, and it used to say, see more, it was just, just a few words, see more, dash, help more, dash sell more. And this was my sales approach to being successful. And let me explain how that worked. I felt like the more people I was able to see, the more leads I was able to get, the more people I was capable of helping. And the more people that I was able to help led me to more sales. And in turn, it was a win-win situation for everybody. So my goal was to see as many people as I could. The people that I saw, I wanted to help those people, which was in turn going to give me the success I needed in my business. And I will tell you guys, for over 20 years, that worked for me. 
and it wasn't difficult and it wasn't hard because I kept it simple. It is also really important for me to know that my clients understand my recommendation. Um, when it comes to insurance, insurance is extremely confusing and confusing. So it is really important that I make sure that I am communicating in a way that doesn't does not sound like this fast talking salesperson and sound like somebody that is trying to educate them and to share my knowledge, whatever knowledge that is that I have with them to strengthen what they are trying to accomplish. Now, all of these things are things that are important to me in engaging my clients and making sure I keep them excited about the conversation that I am having with them. Now, in order to accomplish these things, so I can't leave you hanging, I can't say what I do and not tell you how I do it. In order to do this, there are some things that, I, that has to happen. I have to ask a lot of questions. But this is the thing, when asking questions to clients, a lot of times it draws up defensive behaviors. So it's really important for me to make sure that I am asking, when I ask these questions, they know why I'm asking these questions. There's a reason why I'm asking. So I explain that to my clients. Then I listen. I never interrupt my clients. And I listen to exactly what they are telling me. And I take notes on what I'm listening because my memory isn't what it used to be. I'll forget what they said. So I take notes. I use words when I'm listening to them in order to keep them talking. Like, tell me more. Help me understand this, Mr. Client. House. Tell me what else about what you just said? So those are all words and phrases that I will use in order to get more information out of my customers. I also, I communicate in a manner to make sure that I am feeling confident that they understand my recommendation. Now, depending on my client, because people, you communicate with people different ways, people take communication differently. So depending on the client that I am dealing with, I use different methods to accomplish making sure that they understand what it is that I am recommending. For example, I might use analogies for those people who like analogies. I like to use stories, visual aids. There are times I will, I'm not a good artist, but I will attempt to draw out my il illustration to help my customer understand my point. I use hypothetical situations to help my client understand my point. So these are all things that I do. First of all, things that are important to me and then things that I do to make sure that my clients are engaged and exciting and feeling confident in what it is that I am doing for them. Now, this is the truth. Customers will confuse insurance. We've already established is very confusing. And customers will say they understand something and they don't. So in essence, customers will lie, unfortunately. So we must gear our questions up so that the conversation is in a way that uncomplicates the complicated parts of insurance without insulting our clients. So that's very important as well as we are attempting to engage our clients. The key to really, the key to, let's try this again. All things being equal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. Let me back up. I'm going to back up so that I can, can make sure I get this right. Highlight when you're talking to your clients, highlight the emotional responses a customer will achieve by your recommendation. So you have to help them to see how you are able to benefit, how they are able to benefit by doing business with you. And then you have to help them to be able to communicate that back to you because that is reinforcing 
those emotions. That is reinforcing what it is that you are trying to get them to see. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So something that I say often in my interactions with my customers is, Mr. Client, if, if I can find a plan that will give you the features and benefits you are looking for, tell me, how would that make you feel? And then I pause and I wait for their reaction. Now, the reaction, as much as it is, um, that I am interested in it, but I don't necessarily need to hear it. I'm really more interested in them having the feeling of how that is going to make them feel because we've already determined that buyers are emotional. Now, on the flip side, if I'm trying to create a little bit of discomfort or pain so that I can help my clients see or ward off potential setbacks, I might say something like this. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Customer, but I just want you to think about something for a second. God forbid, if you are diagnosed with a critical illness like cancer, what options do you have to help with medical and hospital expenses? What do you have in place that can provide you that type of help you will need. And I, once again, I'm not looking for an answer for them. I'm looking for them to think. By saying things like this, you are tapping right into their emotions. You are getting right to the heart of what your clients and your customers are looking for and what they need. I hope that made sense to you guys because probably of all my slides, this one can be the most confusing because a lot of people aren't doing this. So um, I hope you got that one. Now, all things being equal, people want to do business with a friend. And all things being not so equal, People still want to do business with a friend. So think about it for a moment. As a self-employed business owner, would you prefer to hire someone you like or someone you dislike? Well, your clients are in that same boat when they're dealing with you. Your clients want to work with somebody they like too. So it's important for you to make yourself likable. I'm not saying you need to be, you know, all out friendly and you should be friendly, but I'm not saying you need to be over the top. That's the word I'm looking for. You don't need to be over the top, but you do need to be likable because this is what is going to open the door to allow trust to come in. So it's very important for you guys to, to make sure you are doing and saying things to present yourself as a likable and trusted agent. Now, I'm going to be honest, guys. I can go on this topic for an hour or two because this is a passion of mine. Trust in business, especially with what we do and how important what we sell is. I can go on this tangent for an hour, but we only have so much time. So you are off the hook. You will not hear my tangent. But I do want to go over just a few more things that I think is very important for you to consider as you are building that trust with your clients. The first thing is going to be be open-minded. In order to build a lasting and strong relationship with your clients, they must be able to trust and rely on you as the expert. That's why it is crucial to maintain a a policy of openness when it comes to your professional opinion and point out point of view regarding the best interest of your clients. Um, I can be, it really, it can be really tempting to want to appear agreeable to your clients 
and avoid uncomfortable confrontations by telling your client exactly what they think they want to hear or withholding your truth. But I'm going to tell you, be cautious of, the, of this, because this practice is not only counterproductive, but it can also damage your reputation in the business. By confidently expressing your honest opinion, clients will respect you, they will respect your initiative, and they will really desire your excellence because of your truthfulness. So it's, don't be afraid to tell your clients what you're thinking instead of just trying to make the sale. The next one is exceed expectations. There used to be this thing that I used to do that I used to say and believe in is one of the best ways to build a strong client relationship is to wow your customer. And that's what I live by. I, every interaction, I wanted to wow them. By doing this, you position yourself as a trusted advisor. However, make sure you don't oversell yourself or promise unrealistic expectations or results because that can also be devastating. Understand your client goals. We touched on this a little bit earlier. By taking the time to understand your client goals, this will help to build a relationship of trust and mutual respect because your clients will say, they get me. This person gets me. And that's what you want. Next, speak your client's language. Okay, I'm not talking about, you know, something you should avoid doing is using insurance jargon when you're talking to your clients. I'm talking about something a little bit different. Successful agents can adapt to their client's style and preferred method of communication. That's what you should be trying to do is to adapt to your client's style and preferred method of communication. Some clients might prefer to do video meetings. You need to equip yourself to be able to accommodate those type of buyers. Some clients may prefer text messages instead of email messages. You need to adapt your way of communication in order to accommodate those type of clients. But what's most important is that you need to make sure you're finding out that preferred form of communication so that you are doing it for your client. This should be a, a no-brainer. Stay in contact with your clients. Clients want to know that they are more than just a commission to you. Call them or text them periodically. Definitely call them on special days like anniversaries and birthdays and kids' birthdays. That kind of stuff goes a long way. The other thing that I used to like to do is set up a call plan where you were touching bases with your clients periodically. And periodically can mean anything to you. It might look different for you than me. For me, mine was either quarterly or semi-annually. That was a definite thing that was going to happen for me to touch bases with my clients just to make sure nothing has changed. It is better to be proactive in working with your clients than to be reactive. By contact, staying in contact with your clients, you are making yourself proactive in the needs of your clients and you are not just being reactive. Being reactive can lose you a client because if they're already searching rates with other carriers, you possibly are going to lose them. The final thing that I want to say, guys, is be humble. Now, with this, I want you guys to all believe in yourself. Have faith in your abilities to do wonderful things for your clients. And be amazing in your interactions with your customers. But remain humble, guys, in your approach to finding solutions for your clients' needs. By doing this, it will help you 
to learn and to continue to empathize with your client's situation. That is going to do it for us for Motivation Monday. I want to once again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, comments, anything that you might want to share, maybe there was something I missed that you guys want to share and say, you know, Lisa, this is another way that I build trust with my clients. You can reach us by email at training at ahcpsales.com. That's probably the best way, or you can call agent support at the number on your screen. Now, if you would like to watch this particular webinar again, or if you would like to watch any of our webinars, you can definitely go to youtube.com and see this webinar again. I want to thank you guys all once again. Have a fabulous week, and we will see you next Monday.